Uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you know, as an environmental educator or a community engagement uh, facilitator, you would notice that I've got about only five slides. And you know, that's the nature of my work because, you know, particularly in such gatherings, I mean, these gatherings are very, very important for people like myself because, you know, the issues that we deal with, particularly from the community's point of view, sometimes we have a lot of uh, sensitive environmental issues of which, you know, you might be in a situation where you re really don't know where you are heading. As some of you who have worked with communities will agree with me that, you know, sometimes it takes a long time before people could actually uh, understand why are we really concerned about species and all of that. So my role, uh, especially this morning, is to highlight the issue and then maybe the later stage in one of the presentations that I'm going to do later and just talk more uh, about it. But the title of my presentation, as, as you can see, is Sport Hunting with Dogs. But I must say that I'm not an expert when it comes to sport hunting. But I want to talk uh, on the context of uh, rural and semi-urban communities. Because uh, in those communities, there's also a lot of sport hunting that uh, is kind of taking place. But in most cases, those sport hunting are kind of related to an aspect where people use dogs to bring down an animal. And of course, there's an element of petting and uh, a lot of, uh, of uh, such issues. Okay, and then uh, my definition of sport uh, hunting in this context, you know, is that it's an action, action practice which involves the use of dog to bring an, an, an animal down. This has, has been happening for as long as I can remember. I remember a time when I, I was also a, a young man growing up. I mean, there was a, a lot of these in the community where I live in where dogs were used to bring down animals. And of course, there was an element of betting, be it maybe the use of uh, like goats as a, as, a, as, a, as a betting prize and things like those. And, and, also, also, and also in other type of hunting as well, because the betting, we must understand that is not only on an aspect of bringing an, 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 an animal down. Sometimes it does happen where people bet, you know, particularly in terms of... Uh, the dog that is brave to be able to put down those animals that are dangerous, things like your otters, things like your, 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 your porcupines. And then I must also say that, uh, you know, interviewing uh, 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 all people, particularly in rural areas, they will tell you that uh, the sport hunting with the use of dogs, it has been there like all the time, even a long time ago, which is why you had uh, practices like in uh, a uh, the the difference uh, in that context is the fact that previously it was controlled. So people were not uh, uh, permitted to kind of go and hunt as they please. I mean, it was controlled. And of course, as I said earlier, yeah, that gambling was there, although it was in money at the time, but there was an element of gambling. And now we have to ask ourselves, what is the situation now? You'll see that, uh, you know, it's a very short presentation because at the end of the day, I also want ideas as well. You know, when you work with communities dealing with uh, sensitive environmental issues, it's tough. It is not easy. So you always need a lot of ideas uh, from uh, gatherings uh, of this nature. I think I, I already said something on this point. But now we have to ask ourselves, what are we dealing with now? I mean, previously it was sport hunting, but it will have a reasonable number of dogs. But now what are we concerned about is the organized sport hunting, I mean, uh, which is an element of, uh, of, uh, of, 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 of poaching, as we all know. Now you have a, lo a lot of cases where people go out and hunt in big numbers. And you must, uh, you must be asking yourself if you have about maybe 30 or so dogs at the same time in terms of the impact of uh, those dogs on so many different species. Because you must remember that there are things like, you know, you know like things like uh, 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 your surrogate and things like those. They get killed and live in the field. So the, 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 the impact can be very uh, devastating. And then again, I, I always emphasize this point all the time, that when you talk about the issue of uh, spawn hunting using dogs either to bring the animal down, is not a, I don't see it as a black and white thing because we must also take into account that we also have a lot of breeders, of which in most cases, some of them are white people. So they do feed uh, uh, this element of sport hunting with the use of, 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 of dogs one way or another. 
So this is just one issue which affects all of us. And then again, the question that I always ask myself, and especially having practiced environmental education for quite a while, you know, you talk about an issue, but at the end of the day, you always have to try and find a solution. In most cases, when we talk about these issues, we are quick to say we need to improve law enforcement. Yes, that is true, but law enforcement alone cannot address some of these issues. We always have to ask ourselves, because you know, at the end of the day, as much as we see the communities as part of the problem, they can also be part of a solution as well. So therefore, we always have to ask ourselves, have we done enough to be able to engage these communities? Because surely, at the end of the day, when you talk about uh, these issues, you know, these are issues with a financial implication for both for, uh, 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 hunters and also the, 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 the landowners. Okay, as I said, I mean, we always say that uh, we, go, we have this under control, but at the end of the day, you know, we, we, we always say, like, employ a very wrong approach of uh, using a teacher-centered approach where we want to go to people and just tell them that, no, this is wrong, this, you, you mustn't do that, but uh, not actually giving ourselves time to actually understand the, the, con the, the concept in which people are you know, in terms of uh, what do they think about the, the issue itself. And then having said that, I think, I mean, when I say we, I'm talking about, you know, all the people, you know, who are involved in conservation, be it in law enforcement, environmental education, we think we know all, but uh, we, we really don't, we haven't put ourselves in the shoes of these people. The community conservation con concept, it's a wonderful concept, but in most cases, it is still on paper. We haven't managed to engage all the communities uh, on the ground. Not just to say that uh, this is a, a project that uh, we are initiating, but to try and find out from the people in terms of what do they think is practical, what do they, what do they really want for their specific communities. And then we need to identify ways and means of uh, engaging this, this audience. As we know that uh, it's a sensitive environmental issue, so it can be a bit difficult at times, so we need to know how to engage uh, this. And also, I think probably, uh, just to end my slides, and you know, the, 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 the most important thing is that as much as you do conservation, but there is a time where you have to reach a compromise position. We know that this, sport, this type of sport hunting with the use of dog, I mean, it's affecting a lot of species. But what we need to understand is that it has been a case, uh, it has been a case for a very long time, and it's not going to go anywhere. So we need to find a compromise position between ourselves as stakeholders and also the hunters themselves. And more importantly, again, we work with communities where there is no wildlife within their area, partly because maybe it was like hunted out completely. At times, we need to put ourselves in the shoes. If it means joining the community members to go into the communal land and do hunting, of which you wouldn't be able to find animals, but then it presents you with an opportunity to begin to ask questions as to why do you think there are few animals uh, you know, within an area where you live? What do you think needs to be done? Because the fact of the matter is that People go to private lands and, and dog get shot and, and, and like so many things. So therefore, this issue has got a financial implication for people on the ground and also for, for the landowners. So, yeah, so basically, I mean, this is uh, uh, the end of my slide. But, uh, you know, the whole idea at the end of the day was just to highlight an issue that this is an issue. And I think uh, all of us sitting around this room really need to think very, very carefully in terms of how to go about uh, addressing, uh, you know, some of these issues. And of course, trying to understand from the perspective of the hunters themselves, because believe you me, they might have a solution to many of the issues that uh, we are discussing. But it's just that we haven't managed to engage them appropriately to be able to facilitate that process. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Samson. We've got a minute or two to spare here. Um, Samson, you did very well on your time. Is there any question? One, let's take a question for Samson. Thanks, Simpson. Um, you're saying community conservation is a is an issue. Like uh, it's it's on paper only, and uh, there isn't much on the ground. And you're talking about people needs to be you know engaged on the ground. What um, and I agree with you, uh, one. But what what do you think hinders the actual communication with people? Do you think it's an approach? What 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 is the problem? And and how do you think uh, it should be addressed? 
Yeah, yeah, you know, to be quite honest, I must say that uh, there are people who are doing very well. I think a uh, case in point is the the situation here in Guazunatal. But uh, talking about, uh, you know, the, 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 the things that I think hinder, you know, success on that regard, I think it has to do with the way in which we approach our communities. I don't think we take enough time to really understand the structures or the dynamics within the community. And by this, I'm trying to say that, uh, you know, you can't really uh, implement uh, community conservation where you're only working with a, a certain section of the community at the end of the day and uh, ending up with a situation where the majority of the people are kind of saying, we don't know anything about what is happening there. So you really need to have an approach where everybody within the community is able to have an input in terms of what do they think need to happen into that community and how will those things happen and all of that. I think it has to do with an approach. But having said that, there are some people who are doing wonderful work, but I don't think we've, we've really done enough to actually engage, engage all the communities. It's the same thing with the issue of uh, poaching and all of that. The hunters themselves, we have to engage them. We haven't done that.